take the desire for sex expression. Now there is a force with which I master the weak and the strong, the old and the young, the ignorant and the wise. In fact, I master all who neglect to master sex. How can one master the emotion of sex? By the simple process of transmuting that emotion into some form of activity other than copulation. Sex is one of the greatest of all forces which motivate human beings. Because of this fact, it is also one of the most dangerous forces. If humans would control their sex desires and transmute them into a driving force with which to carry on their occupation, that is, if they spent on their work one half the time they dissipate in pursuit of sex, they would never know poverty. Do I understand you to imply there is a relationship between sex and poverty? Yes, where sex is not under definite control. If allowed to run its natural course, sex will quickly lead one into the habit of drifting. Is there any relationship between sex and leadership? Yes. All great leaders in every walk of life are highly sexed, but they follow the habit of controlling their sex desires, switching them into a driving force behind their occupation. Is the habit of overindulgence in sex as dangerous as the habit of taking narcotics or liquor? There is no difference between these habits. Both lead to hypnotic control through the habit of drifting. Why does the world look upon sex as something vulgar? Because of the vulgar abuse people have made of this emotion. It is not sex that is vulgar. It is the individual who neglects or refuses to control and guide it. Do you mean by your statement that one should not indulge the desire for sex? No. I mean that sex, like all other forces available to man, should be understood, mastered, and made to serve man. The desire for sex expression is as natural as the desire for food. The desire can no more be killed than one can entirely stop a river from flowing. If the emotion of sex is shut off from the natural mode of expression, it will break out in some other less desirable form, just as a river will, if dammed, break through and flow around the dam. The person who has self-discipline understands the emotion of sex, respects it, and learns to control and transmute it into constructive activities. And just what damage is there in overindulgence of sex? The greatest damage is that it depletes the source of man's greatest driving force and wastes, without adequate compensation, man's creative energy. It dissipates energy needed by nature to maintain physical health. Sex is nature's most useful therapeutic force. It depletes the magnetic energy which is the source of an attractive, pleasing personality. It removes the sparkle from one's eyes and sets up discord in the tone of one's voice. It destroys enthusiasm, subdues ambition, and leads inevitably to the habit of drifting on all subjects. I would like for you to answer my question in another way, by telling me what beneficial ends the emotion of sex may be made to attain if mastered and transmuted. Controlled sex supplies the magnetic force that attracts people to one another. It is the most important factor of a pleasing personality. It gives quality to the tone of voice, and enables one to convey through the voice any feeling desired. It serves, as nothing else can serve, to give motive power to one's desires. It keeps the nervous system charged with the energy needed to carry on the work of maintaining the body. It sharpens the imagination, and enables one to create useful ideas. It gives quickness and definiteness to one's physical and mental movements. It gives one persistence and perseverance in the pursuit of one's major purpose in life. It is a great antidote for all fear. It gives one immunity against discouragement. It helps to master laziness and procrastination. It gives one physical and mental endurance while undergoing any form of opposition or defeat. It gives one the fighting qualities necessary under all circumstances for self-defense. In brief, it makes winners and not quitters. Are those all the advantages you claim for controlled sex energy? No, they are only some of the more important benefits it provides. Perhaps some will believe the greatest of all the virtues of sex is that it is nature's method of perpetuation of all living things. This alone should remove all thought that sex is vulgar. I gather from what you say that the emotion of sex is a virtue, not a fault. It is a virtue when controlled and directed to the attainment of desirable ends. It is a fault when neglected and permitted to lead to acts of lust. Why aren't these truths taught to children by their parents in the public schools? The neglect is due to ignorance of the real nature of sex. 
It is just as necessary in maintaining health for one to understand and properly use the emotion of sex as it is to keep the body's sewer system clean. Both subjects should be taught in all public schools and all homes where there are children. Wouldn't the majority of parents need instruction on the proper function and use of sex before they could intelligently teach their children? Yes, and so would the public school teachers. What relative position of importance would you give to the need for accurate knowledge on the subject of sex? It is next to the top of the list. There is but one thing of greater importance to human beings. That is accurate thought. Do I understand you to say that knowledge of the true functions of sex and ability to think accurately are the two things of greatest importance to mankind? That is what I intend you to understand. Accurate thinking comes first because it is the solution to all man's problems, the answer to all his prayers, the source of opulence and all material possessions. Accurate thinking is aided by properly controlled and directed sex emotion, because sex emotion is the same energy as that with which one thinks. It begins with those who desire self-determination sufficiently to be willing to pay its price. No one can be entirely free, spiritually, mentally, physically, and economically, without learning the art of accurate thinking. No one can learn to think accurately without including, as a part of the needed knowledge, information on the control of sex emotion through transmutation.